Hi there, welcome to tutorial 11. So we have covered a lot, so now we are going to enter into the part for where we are going to address the, the corrections to the eddy viscosity models. We, we studied that in the theory and we're going to address two particular corrections. So it will be the production limiter and curvature correction. So in the first tutorial, we're going to talk about the production limiter. So let's talk about the case that we're going to see here. So as you look at the screen, so again, another validation case coming from the aeronautical industry. So this is a transonic flow over a rare airfall. So, so far we know how to create the geometry using the same model, the space claim, and generate this mesh and so on. Okay. So I'm not going to address any particular about that. Also how to plot normalized velocities and so on. So what we're going to, to study is this particular uh, deficiency that we were going to find the linear the viscosity models, which is the overproduction of totally kinetic energy. We're going to see what, what we're talking about here after. So here we have a few references. Okay. So you can visit these links or then all these papers are all available. So this is the geometry that we have, our airfall. Now we have a C domain, C topology. Okay. And this is our mesh and structure mesh. So we have our inflation layer close to the airfoil triangular mesh with a nice transition. Uh, the case is a wall molding, by the way, later we're going to see a little bit more about that. But then also remember that, and I want to stress this about airfalls, that you need, if you change the incoming flow, you need also to rotate the axis about your computing the forces and coefficients. So here you have a recall and you have the rotation matrix. Okay. We also addressed that previously, but I, I like to address this one and to stress this because a lot of people forget to, to do this. Okay. And this is re the results that we're going to get. So we're running this airfall, this Mach number and this angle relative flow angle. So there is no massive separation, nothing, that, nothing like that. So. We look at the contours of Mach number and see that we're in supersonic conditions. We have here the clear chart wave and here the control of pressure. See that you have also the change in pressure as indication of that fingerprint of, of chart wave. So we have it there. So this is a more severe uh, physics. You know? Dealing with chart waves is not easy, but fluent is very robust that it's going to give you good good solutions now we look at again again at the viscosity ratio that quantity I already mentioned that people uh, don't look at that very often and this is very important remember just to check if you have a good mesh in case you are not adding too much transition into your solution and contrary uh, conversely to what we did previously that the was transition modeling and we have very fine meshes and it was very good meshes look at here that is you look at here in the in the rear rear part of the airfoil, see that the we're getting that transition from the uh, prismatic cells or uh, rectangular cells to the triangular cells quite fast. Okay, and when I talk about adding numerical diffusion due to that transition, probably here you see. So this is very important to control. Okay, remember that we talk about that. Uh, viscosity peaks in the middle of the boundary layer, kind of you have it here. Okay, so probably. You see that if you look at the airfoil in most of, of its extension, this mesh is okay, except here close to the to the trailing edge. That maybe it might be a very a, very, a good idea to add another transition layer or probably reduce the transition. Okay, but it's not that critical. It's not that bad. But this is what I was talking. See here that kind of you start to see that you are adding some some diffusion there. That in some situations might be critical. Okay, and now we look at here, and this is where I want to, to arrive, the total kinetic energy. Okay, so see that we have two solutions here, one with production limiter disabled and the other with the production limiter enabled. And see that the difference is large, okay, at least from the qualitative point of view, okay. And the idea of these production limiters is to attenuate the excessive generation of total kinetic energy in stagnation points. And additionally, I might add that when you have chart wave also, it might also attenuate that production there, okay. My positive or it might not be okay this needs to be assessed but clearly uh one of the advantages is here so look at here in this extension point and see that this that looks like some diffusion but in reality is excessive production of tka okay and that might be a problem 
in some cases and in particular when we deal with this transition to turbulence and like in the previous tutorials and probably if you go back to those tutorials you will see that two production limiters were enabled okay just to avoid that because that can trigger artificial transition okay so using this production limiter is critical in transition uh, in transition modeling using a standard turbulence models is the user choice but usually it's recommended to to enable um by default it is enabled okay so clearly we see the, this impact here that it might or it might not be okay it's not necessarily what you will find but it might or it might not be you might have that 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 influence in your forces prediction and heat transfer rates okay again this is a validation case so there is some data available so see here that we compare with experimental data, the pressure coefficients, so quite good agreement. Then we have some differences here, but this is not to be worried about. Okay, so whole software will have problems here. So also this depends on the mesh. So if you have a super fine mesh, you will capture better that shock wave. And here also we compare friction coefficient. Okay, so we kind of have a, a, a trend, okay, what is important. And also we have information about the, the CD and CL, okay, experimental and numerical values. Okay, so see that we have a comparison here and we have a relative good agreement, okay? So, but remember also, I want to stress that even if you have this experimental data, just be careful that this doesn't mean that this is the actual true data, okay? This data might be, might be wrong, okay? You never know that how, how that experiment was done. And also there are some sources of, of uncertainty. Look at this angle, angle 2.79, okay? Kind of, how do you measure with that precision that in the experiment or do you guarantee that you have that precise angle but in any case we have a, a very good agreement okay so this is the case that we're going to run and if you go to the web page okay you will have access to the data here so again you can download the fluent files okay the case is ready to go and the or is you want to set up everything from scratch you have there the, the meshes and also the setup plus the additional validation data so you're going to have these folders okay fluent cases meshes Super material, I think you have that one about validation data, but just to show you the fluent cases here. So you're going to find three folders, three cases, okay? So you have density-based solvers and pressure-based solver. I'm not going to talk about the density-based, I'm going just to address the pressure-based solver, the one that I recommend you, but you have also this setup here, and then you can compare and draw your own conclusions. And then you have the same setup using the, the pressure-based solver lowest speed okay so this is mag high mac number this is mac i know 0 0.2 i think just to show you that nothing nothing changed it's still you are going to have that that overproduction of tk tk in the extraction points okay uh finally just to show you here you have a very nice link this one here okay so let me just show you that this is they have a very extensive validation okay and comparison with some other solvers let me put it there okay and he this is the link okay so see here that if you go to any of these links you will have different solvers okay and see here the comparison using some state-of-the-art solvers used use fight by nasa see that it's still i just want to stress that still you have this different here for those that are worried that well, but there is a problem i have a problem it's still very sophisticated software people that knows very well what they are doing okay have problems okay so see here that you have a very nice comparison very different methods so see that some specific solvers have a better agreement with the data but some others are a little bit far okay so just compare that data there also okay and then you can draw your conclusions you can compare your different similar turbulence model so with this i will end this transition okay uh, the, this introduction sorry this introduction to this case see you in the next video where we are work, going to work out in the case setup thank you very much for your attention see you next time bye